I'm Rose McDonough and I am a retired family and consumer science teacher and it's summer and it's about 91 degrees outside and my yellow squash is just going wild so my husband went out and picked I don't know how many and I brought a whole bunch of them in and said we're having stuffed squash today for dinner so the first thing I need to do is I put some oil in here and I actually put garlic oil in and I did a half of an onion so I'm going to saute the half of the onion until it's almost done it doesn't need to be the whole way done because I'm going to bake it later and I got a big spoonful ready to go of some garlic now I have ground beef ground beef sirloin actually I have a 90 10 right here I also have some down in the freezer but it's frozen so I bought some meat today so that I could actually do this recipe you can use ground beef you can use ground turkey you can use ground sausage you can use whatever you want for this I've also made it without any meat in it, but I'm trying to get away with a one meal dish today, and that would be why I'm throwing the meat in here. So this is my yellow squash, and you know on fruits and vegetables it's called the skin? This is actually called the rind, and the rind is a little hard, and I want to be able to bake it later, but I don't want to bake it forever. So I wanted to get it ready sooner. I want to soften it up sooner. Most of the nutrients in the yellow squash actually comes from the rind. It does not come from the seeds or the pulp on the inside. So I don't want to get rid of this. I don't want to cut any of this off, but I need it to be softened. So what I'm doing is taking my trusty fork, which is a meat fork, and I'm going down to where it's the thickest and I'm stuffing it in. Very easy to do. You know why? Because I've already cooked this one, but I'm showing you how to do it anyway. And then I go and I do another spot. Woo, that's a little bit tough in there. And then I come up somewhere into the neck and I put this in again. If you did not want to do this, if you were afraid and you said, oh, I better cut it first. I have to tell you, it's a whole lot easier to cut it this way than it is to cut it when it's not softened up. But if you were afraid and you wanted to do that, the easiest thing for you to do would be to cut off the stem and the blossom end, stem, blossom end, cut those off, cut from top to bottom, or you could cut it in half and then from top to bottom. You could put it into a skillet with a little bit of water, put a lid on top of it and steam it. Or you could put it onto a microwave safe casserole dish, do the same thing with a little bit of water, wrap it up and steam it. But I put it in the microwave and I did four or six of them. Let me hold on, I'll tell you. One, two, three, four, five, six of them. I did six of them for five minutes and that was it. That's all you need to do. So again, you want to stab it so that the air can escape. Once it warms up a little bit in there, you want that to escape and you're ready to go. All right, so I'm looking. My onions are just about get, starting to get translucent. So now I'm gonna toss in my garlic. And I was going to put fresh garlic in. I don't have any fresh garlic left. I have to put that on my grocery list. So I'm just going to make that just until the fragrance hits off on it. Doesn't take very long. Remember, this will be in here and I'm coming back to this. And now I'm going to add about one and a half, about well, one and a quarter, I guess, pounds of ground meat. I actually want to make a meatloaf out of the other. So I'm holding on to the other part of the ground meat. And like I said, I picked a 90-10 because I didn't want very much fat. My nephew always says to me, oh, you need to have the 85-15. And I have bought from somebody's farm the 85-15, which is delicious, but I am going to get more fat off of that. He says you need the extra fat because it just needs it to taste good. Okay, I think I've told you this before, but I'm making sure I'm telling you again. Go from the outside of your skillet into the inside. Outside of the skillet into the inside because I want to minimize how much of a mess that I'm making. Okay, that's going on. I'm gonna rinse my hands real quick here. So good because I was working with raw meat. And I wanna come back and I want to, as this is cooking, want to talk to you about this. So now that it has been cooked, voila, it was cooked. I'm cutting off, as I said, my stem and my blossom end. I know people who eat the blossoms when they look beautiful out there, I happen to have not ever eaten them, but I've been told by several people that they are delicious. If you eat the blossoms, hey, 
draw me a recipe. I'd really be curious to know how to do them. I look out and I have blossoms and I think, oh, I should do a recipe. And then I look out and the blossoms are gone. So I've never actually got them picked when they're beautiful to make anything out of them. Again, you can do one of two things. Cut it in half or you can go from the gooseneck down to the bottom. Because this has been cut already, this has been cooked already, it's very easy for me to get my knife started. And then I'm just going to work my way all the way down. Much easier because it's been cooked. So there's my seeds. I don't have any seeds on this side. I'm just going to use my knife real quick here. Go in and pull out a few to loosen up where the seeds are. And then I just put my fork in and start flicking out the seeds. Now, if you were a holist, you would be taking these seeds and drying them out and saving them to plant in your garden next year. Notice how I'm not taking any credit for that because that is not something that I am going to do. It might be something that Bob would do. Bob saves seeds sometimes from year to year. He puts them in canning jars to keep them. Works out nicely. All right, moving this along in here. So I want to tell you the other ingredients that's going to go in. So I have the meat in here. I have the garlic and I have the onions. Once this is finished cooking, and it doesn't have to be cooked brown because it's going to go into the oven. So, <coughs> excuse me. So because I just make sure that the, it's mostly not pink is all I need. To that, I'm going to add a box of stuffing mix. I would quickly look through my cupboards. I did not have any stuffing mix that was for beef. So guess what? We're getting stuffing mix for chicken. It doesn't really matter to me what I'm going to put in. But I'm going to add that in. I'm not going to add any of the water. I'm not going to add any of the butter. I'm just going to use the stuffing mix as is, the dry stuffing mix. And because I'm using the 90-10, there is a little bit of fat in here, but I'm not worried about that fat because that's what's going to help to absorb into the dry breadcrumbs of the stuffing mix. Um, you could, if you didn't want to use something like that, you could actually take bread, toast it in your oven, toast it in your toaster, whatever you wanted to do, and then cube it up and you could add it. You could add, if you would prefer, you want to make it gluten-free, you can instead add oats to it or you can add some rice to it. I actually was going to add rice to it. Even made some rice this morning to put aside. I made a double batch so I could make some fried rice at a later time. But I thought, oh, you know, that stuffing sure is good. It's one of the better things to add to it. So stuffing it is, that's what we're having today. All right, that's almost cooking, finished cooking. Let me go to this one. And then in the miracle of being prepped, I'm gonna show you what I'm going to do with these. I have a very large baking dish and I put all of my other pieces already in the baking dish. All right, so in this bowl, I finished cooking the meat with the onions and the garlic. And in this bowl, I put in stuffing mix, and then I also put in some mozzarella cheese. You don't have to put in mozzarella cheese. I just think it binds it together. That's why I like it. I also put in mushrooms. I had about five mushrooms that were starting to go bad in my refrigerator. So I thought, oh, let me just chop those up. So I diced those up and I poured everything on top of it. Because it's a 90-10, there wasn't that much fat and I just added that on top of it. And I'm just folding all of this together. And in my pan over here, I put parchment paper. You don't have to put parchment paper. You don't even have to. You could use a baking sheet, like a cookie sheet, if you wanted to. But I have this great pan that's got the sides on it, and that's why I'm choosing to use this one instead. I put the parchment paper in because I don't know when you're watching this, but it's Sunday, and I would like to make my evening as quick as possible and as painless. So after I make this meal that's a one-dish meal, after I do that, then I don't even have to worry about cleanup. I'm just going to be able to pull that out and we'll be finished. All right, so you don't have to add mushrooms. You could add spinach. If you were using frozen spinach, make sure you thaw it out completely. You could put in Swiss chard. You could put in kale if you wanted to. You don't have to. These are just extra things. That's the beauty of a recipe like this. Do what you like. Maybe you love cheese and you want to layer it up with cheese and that's fine. And I've made it before when I've made sausage in it. I've also diced up tomatoes and I've put some sauce over top of it. Do whatever you want. It's your dinner. You get to experiment. That's called cooking. All right, so now I've got this ready to go and I'm ready to start filling. So I'm just going to 
start layering them in here and this is a job where unfortunately I'm going to use my hands just a little bit more and I'm going to layer and I might end up having to come back and add more into one or another but I just want to make sure everybody is getting some everybody every squash they're not humans are getting some although I guess they are if you watch veggie tales right all right so we'll get these finished filling so blink your eye and then the next thing you see they're going to be all filled so they're all ready to go they're completely stuffed it takes a few minutes because you have to be filling them and pressing down filling them and pressing down and you can add some cheese onto them if you want i put cheese on a couple of them and i had a little bit of mushrooms left over so i just tossed those in anything that came out it doesn't matter because it's on that parchment paper and i'll be scooping that up later by no problems to eat that so this is going to go into the oven again i said 30 to 35 minutes at 350 degrees so we'll be eating dinner around 5 30 tonight and if somebody wants something else or they want sauce on the side i have some pizza sauce i have tomato sauce they are welcome to do whatever they want but for me this will be a whole meal and i hope that you try this and i also hope that you let me know if you have other recipes that you love to make i would love to hear them all right let's do some shout outs today that's some names i love when i get to do this um i have no idea who this person is and i like when i don't know who it is because it makes me think i'm touching other lives somebody named mida rod m-a-y-d-a rod thank you for subscribing i really appreciate that and leaving some comments and oh my gosh i've got two in my fingers Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Andrew Kell. I'm sorry to Mida Rod that I'm not showing the same excitement, but Andrew, haven't seen for ages, and I saw Andrew at a graduation party yesterday, and he told me he is enjoying my videos. So, Andrew, thanks. I appreciate it. I've known Andrew probably since he was in sixth grade, and now he's 25 years old. So, thank you i appreciate it for the rest of you please like and subscribe but share share to people who need to learn how to cook i just recently learned that there are some schools that are sadly getting away with taking family and consumer sciences off of their curriculum it used to be that it was required in the state level once in the middle school once in the high school to be offered um, that's not true anymore and so if you know younger people who are just learning to cook this is a great thing. So thank you. Have a good night. Bye.